Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. I'm your host, James Salcedo, and tonight I'm sharing true paranormal stories on the web. As uh, this is part one of this year's uh, 2024's Halloween special. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I just uh, blanked on what to say next. Um, as always, you can find all episodes of the show. There we go. Along with links to social media and other ways to contact me at the podcast page. That is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or accounts of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP, Digital Broadcasting, there you can hear replays of two episodes of my show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. And as always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, for having me on the network and putting my shows up there. If you'd like to support my show, you can do that in a few different ways. You can share the show with others and rate and review it on your favorite podcast platforms. You can find books I've written over on Amazon, Paranormal Fiction and Nonfiction, and including my most recent release, Salcedo Paranormal Experiences. You can sign up for the Patreon page and get one extra episode of uh, True Paranormal Stories from the Web uh, every week as much as possible as much as I'm able to anyway. Uh, or you can just make one-time donations through PayPal. Support is never expected, but always appreciated, as there are expenses in making these shows, from equipment to research materials to travel expenses in some cases. So I think that takes care of everything. This will be a, um, a five-part series that will go out throughout the week of Halloween, uh, along with some other bonus shows that I'll be recording. Uh, and another time here. And uh, yeah, that's the plan for Halloween to celebrate the uh, fourth anniversary of the launch of this podcast. And of course, Halloween itself. And um, by the end of this, this week, we'll have uh, over 680 episodes, which is really amazing. And uh, thank you all for being here for any part of that. So um, I think that takes care of everything for now. Uh, and, uh, yeah, just a, a note on these uh, true paranormal stories from the web. I'm always looking for anyone who wants to share their experience, uh, whether you want to write it in, uh, send it in in a text format, and I can read that, or if you want to join me on the show uh, to talk about your experiences, uh, just let me know. You can do that through email, uh, salcedoparanormal at gmail.com, or through direct messaging on Discord. So. Um, Every once in a while, we get some of those, or we get a uh, someone that uh, some some story is sent ten, sent in to, for me to read, or we'll get someone that wants to join me on the show. And either way is great. Um, names are not required as far as uh, individuals or locations. Um, we can you can be as vague as you want to with uh, where these things take place. The point is more so the experience than the um the details about uh names because i understand that uh there is there is there are people out there that will um unfortunately still make fun of people and their experiences that they have and um so i understand that in some cases people don't want to share their names or where they're at and that is completely fine and uh yeah so just get in touch uh whenever you want to and uh i will share your your stories of your um, your experiences on the show. So, but until then, we always have. Uh, it's amazing to me how often these um, these posts are made online uh, from people sharing their experiences. They they literally come up every day. Uh, whenever I um, go looking for these these uh, true stories, there's always plenty to choose from every week. So. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really amazing, and and it's m one of my favorite parts of doing the show is sharing these uh, true stories here. So let's get right uh, right to that here. 
And thank you all for being here. I see you all in the, the chat. And uh, yeah, looking forward to recording some episodes here tonight. So this first one says, uh, I was always skeptical of ghosts and thought that I would only believe in them and what if I saw it. I never had any paranormal experiences until my grandmother passed away. After that, she appeared to me multiple times, communicating that she was present. A key turning point was when, while I was home alone, I noticed the entire house smelled of my grandmother's perfume, which uh, convinced me that she was really there. I, oh, let me see here. I lost my spot. Okay. I later realized that for the past two years, there were many times where I thought I saw someone, but when I uh, approached, the person would disappear or become transparent. I had dismissed these events as a sign I might be, in quotation marks here, going crazy, but now I wonder if I was actually seeing ghosts. Could these transparent figures actually be spirits? And that's where that one ends. It's possible. Um, it sounds like this person was seeing something even before their grandma, their grandmother passed. Maybe they're sensitive and they don't even realize it. Um, I, could, I can imagine that happening. Uh, so, yeah, and then having that close connection with someone that passes on, um, that's... That uh, makes sense that they would they would see them, and if if they were really close, then that person would want to uh, to still be there, and, and or at least come by and sort of um, say hello in a way here and there. So, yeah, that's um that's fairly common overall. The transparent thing, the way that um, these apparitions appear, some appear to be solid, some appear to be um, translucent or transparent. Some appear in the the clothes that they were um, that they were basically buried in, or that they passed away in. Uh, both I've heard of similar uh, cases with both of those happening. Some appear to be able to change their appearance um, to whatever they want to, and as to how all that works, I have no idea. But all those things uh, have been reported by people over time. In different cases, so and I, I do wonder if that has more to do with the sort of the state of the consciousness that is still around, um, figuring things out, or in some cases not figuring things out, and that's why they appear as they do. Uh, but of course, I have no idea for sure on that. But that that sort of makes sense to me in a way. Um, but yeah, moving on to the next one here. Let's get back to the document. And uh, I lost my spot. Okay, there we go. So this is a bit of a longer one, but still, um, still should be good. This one says, my friend and I, both of us being women in our 40s, went to a historic battlefield for a paranormal investigation. We spent several hours exploring the woods in the early evening and into the night. We captured several EVP, electronic voice phenomena, recordings, and took interesting pic uh, photos around the, t the cannons, showing misty areas that were not visible to the naked eye, uh, showing... Uh, okay, yeah. Sorry, I lost my spot there. Uh, and appeared, let me see, but appeared in pictures. There we go. Sorry about that. My cat was uh, making noises and I was distracted by that. But anyway, let me just read that sentence over again, uh, part of it. And took interesting photos around the, uh, the cannons, showing misty areas that were not visible to the naked eye, but uh, appeared in the pictures. So they were seeing mists in the pictures, but not in person. 
Uh, it says, afterward, we crossed to the cemetery where we made contact through a digital recorder with a spirit named G, and I'm using just first letters here, who politely introduced herself, but then communica communication ceased. Around 10.15 p.m., we decided to return to the battlefield, this time from a different path we hadn't explored before. As we walked up the path, we turned off our lights because the moon was nearly full. Suddenly, we heard a loud crashing sound, like trees and branches breaking and shaking, moving towards us and then away. The noise stopped abruptly, as did the natural sounds, owls and bugs and other animals, creating an eerie silence. I loudly proclaimed it was just an animal, flipped on my headlamp, and saw eye shine in the woods about 15 feet away in a cedar grove. I saw several sets of eyes, two or three or five, maybe more, staring back at us, but no visible animals, just dark masses with eye shine that wasn't white or yellow, but large and high up in the trees. One set of eyes began moving toward us, and I realized we were on a slope, and the eyes were higher than expected uh, in the trees. The creature, or whatever it was, made a loud noise, possibly a stomp, and we fled the area. Although I don't know what we encountered, I felt it wasn't harmful, just observing us and warning us, wanting us to leave, which we did. I did an online search for eye shine images and thought the closest match was a bobcat, but there are no known bobcats in this area, nor do they travel in groups as I saw several sets of eyes. I'm not sure what we encountered. What do you all think? And that's where that one ends. So makes me wonder about the possibilities of battlefields, not just having, let's say, spirits of people or even residual energy from people, but also being hotspots for Maybe cryptid activity, maybe other other beings there that somehow feed on that feed on that energy. I, I'm curious about that. Uh, I don't know. It, it's it's odd that there were so many eyes there and so high up in the tree. I don't know if any kind of cats can really climb high up in a tree like that. I mean, I know I've heard of, of course, domestic cats getting stuck in trees. But this sounds like um, whatever these were, they were big. If they were making all that kind of noise, and um, and then if they were only seeing the people were only seeing the eye shine or or light of some kind, and then just dark figures. That's that seems odd as well. You would think they would um, maybe get a better idea if it was some kind of animal. They would, I don't know, they would be able to figure that out, but. It uh, just makes me wonder about the possibility of these places um, that are hotspots for one kind of, let's say, one kind of paranormal event uh, or, yeah, event or uh, environment, if they could be uh, hotspots, and I believe I've heard of this before, too, for other things, for other types of um, encounters or beings there to, to, to either visit or stay there. So... That's sort of where my mind went with that that one right there. But um, but yeah, I don't know what they saw. But uh, of course, you hear about that in, in different parts of the country where this this particular animal is not supposed to exist there, and yet there are sightings of it there. Um, so, I mean, if if it was them, then if it was the bobcat like they were talking about, then that's um, that's that's odd that they were there when they said that 
they weren't supposed to be there supposedly. Although I always laugh at that because, in a way, because people saying that animals shouldn't be in an area, that's people. I don't think uh, animals really care what people think about where they should be. So, um, in general, anyway. Anyway, so moving on to the next one here. And uh, let's see. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. This one says, as a teenager, I used to regularly walk my dog around 9 p.m. because of cooler temperatures and the safe neighborhood I lived in. I lived near a school with a large park, making it an ideal area for walks. One night while walking through the park, I noticed an elderly woman holding the hand of a small girl standing under a streetlight. Nothing seemed unusual at first, but the pair of them was not moving much. I greeted them and asked how they were or how they were, to which the old woman responded, we are waiting for the noise to stop. The neighborhood was completely silent, which made this response strange. I suddenly felt an instinctual realization that I might not be talking to living people. After wishing them a good night, I quickly left and returned home and told my parents about the weird experience. I didn't feel threatened by the encounter, and the little girl never spoke, only stood there quietly holding the woman's hand. I believe the figures might have been spirits of people who had passed, passed on, possibly tied to the house they lived in, but I can't say for sure what I experienced that night. And that's where that one ends. That is an odd phrase, given how quiet it was there, uh, to have these people say, um, I, of course, it makes me wonder, and because she never spoke, it's impossible to say, but was the little girl hearing the noise too? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, but, yeah, that's a wild one there. And the feeling that the writer there just somehow got or figured out uh, their sense from these two people is also something that is common where you just, there's nothing in their appearance necessarily that is, is strange, but you can still sort of tell that there's not, the situation is not normal. Um, I'm wondering again, like the writer, the, the writer there mentioned, are, were, are they tied to previous events that happened in the area? I don't know. Something that happened um, that made a lot of noise. And so to them, they are hearing it. But, I mean, I guess it really it could even be some kind of uh, time anomaly where they are there but only seen there and, and they're heard, but then everything else that's going on where they're at is not coming through for whatever reason, and the writer there is experiencing uh, seeing these two people there. But um, but yeah, I don't know what to make of that one other other than that, and just the possibility that they might have been spirits of some kind. So it makes me wonder, uh, as always, with these sightings that take place in public areas, how often these figures are seen by other people in the area. And um, if there's other stories about that. So moving on to the next one here. I think we can get at least one more in before the uh, this episode has to end. Uh, let's see. This one says, I worked as an audio technician uh, fitting radios and cameras into cars and occasionally repairing 
chipped windshield or windscreens. About three years ago, a customer came in asking for a chip repair on his windscreen. Being fond of the customer's car model, I went to inspect the chip and agreed to repair it. While inspecting the car, I saw an old woman sitting in the rear driver's side seat and uh, assumed she was the passenger. Once I got back into the store, I informed the customer that the passenger needed to leave the car. The customer was confused, stating he was traveling alone. I was also confused, but handed the keys over to the windscreen repair technician to fix the chip. A few minutes later, the technician returned, looking very pale, reporting he had seen an old woman sitting in the back seat when he approached the car. The technician tried to get her attention, and when she didn't respond, gently knocked on the window. She turned to look at him and then promptly disappeared. Both the technician and I were spooked, and neither of us wanted to do the job alone. So we ended up working together to complete the, work, uh, the windscreen repair. When we shared the experience with the customer, he nodded knowingly and said, we weren't the first people to report seeing something similar. So that's where that one ends. Sounds like that person, uh, that customer, had another person riding with them. And uh, that is wild that they, uh, one moment they're confused and wondering, not sure what's going on. But then the next moment when the, these two technicians tell them, their, their response is, oh, yeah, I've heard of that before. So it makes me wonder, do they not believe in those kind of things or do they just try to ignore it? I would be curious to know more about the passengers or the, the passengers, well, that too. But the driver's experience in the car, do they ever, did they ever feel anything weird in that car? What is the history of the car? Where did they get the car? All these qu questions that, of course, you can't really get answers to, but um, that is an amazing experience. You have two people, and they're in a workplace environment. They're in a, a shop, basically. It's not your usual haunted house story or haunted hospital story or haunted hotel story or whatever. Um, and, uh, yeah, and... I wonder why the woman, it took knocking on the window to get the woman's attention. Uh, if she didn't realize she was being seen at first. Uh, I don't, there's a lot of questions there that I have no answers to. But, uh, but yeah, that, I thought that was an amazing one. And I wonder how often that happens in locations and, and, and especially with vehicles. Um, how many of these stories don't get shared anywhere? where um, there's history with the vehicle, whether it's someone passed away in the vehicle or there was an accident with the vehicle and someone died. Um, just the, all these things. And then, of course, after the fact, there's activity that happens in or, in or around that vehicle. It really is wild how that works. So that's all the time we have for this episode. Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all next time on Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.